This is the beginning of week three. Um, this is the first time that I've had anything in the ring and I'm putting these things in the ring to give her a visual on where I want her to go. You don't have to but it just helps um, for riding or ground driving uh, once I hand walk her through these things and then when I ground drive her which I'm going to do today um, it kind of helps her know where to go. Um, she is hard for her to focus with uh, the bitless bridle on I have found out um, and at this point in time I had sat on her once but pretty much just for a photo op and just to you know sit on her back and just rub her all over um, but we had we didn't go anywhere so I'm just redoing some basics here, having her um, walk when I walk and stop when I stop. And she's at liberty right now. So today I'm going to fit her with the bitless bridle. It's Dr. Cook's cross under. Um, she's she objects to um, things because she hasn't had uh, confinement as far as her head and been told what to do. She's been a free spirit. Um, never had a, a saddle on and nor sir single or had to do any work. Um, here I'm sending her off. I'm just, I have somebody to tape today, so I'm just putting her through a few things to where I can use the whole ring. Uh, when I send her off, I only send her a lap and have her come in, change directions. I usually don't have her do more than two unless she doesn't want to come in. So she came in nice. I'm asking her to go the other way. Uh, stand behind her and driving her and then I will kiss and draw back I pushed her through that spot so she didn't run over my cameraman even though she's up a little high and she's she's almost always willing to come back to me uh, the only time that she doesn't I found is when I right after I ground drive her but she's still she won't come back as easy, but she'll still come right back because uh, she wants to be in your pocket. That's actually one of her faults. I mean, it's a good thing in some... Well, it's not a good thing, but it's good that she wants to be with people and wants to work, but um, she has had no boundaries uh, her whole life on um, acceptable space between her and a person. So that's a hard one for her. So here I'm just lunging her walk and halt. When she turns in, I push toward her neck and I'm looking for her right front to, to step away just like she did there. And every time I try to get back where I am, she wants to come toward me. She can look at me as she does here as long as she doesn't move her feet. Um, people are supposed to move horses feet a horse should not move your feet there I'm asking her to disengage her hindquarter and change direction um, so that's something she couldn't do at all so basically um, she's learning everything she needs to be a riding horse and for a person to have control of her uh, when she's on a line um, in hand or lunging. I just want her to have these skills so she doesn't end up in a in a rescue situation again. Uh, as pretty as she is, she was uh, in that situation for a year and nobody wanted her. Um, 
She wasn't under saddle and had no manners. There I was pushing her down the fence line, teaching her lateral move to move away from pressure to go sideways. Here I am going to fit her, as I said, with um, Dr. Cook's pitless bridle. She's been driven, uh, ground driven, a couple times for no longer than mm, probably about five to ten minutes. Um, I do everything in very short increments, even if I work with the horse for a two hour period, which usually she's an hour. Um, but when I work off farm with horses, I switch it up so they don't get bored. Um, I stale on one thing. I may go back to it in the same session, but keep it interesting. And when I see try of a certain thing, I like to quit and maybe do something else and come back to it. So I just moved her around with that surcingle. She's now at the point where I don't have to worry that she's going to buck in reaction to getting girthed. Um, I still do it uh, incrementally, um, at least in two sessions where I'd do three um, if I was tightening a saddle girth, but this is a soft surcingle. So I'm sending her off here. Um, I believe I'm out of the I'm out of the surcingle uh, circles there where you put the lines and tear it. Uh, it's harder to maintain the lines that way, but if she gets upset, I can pull her around. I've done prepar preparatory steps with ropes on her legs, um, so she's not over fearful of that at all, but um, it's, it's really hard for her to understand the concept of driving uh, and staying straight. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't want to start over. Um, because when I use the right rein to keep her on the rail, the cross hundred pieces of the bridle. <coughs> Excuse me again. Uh, constrict under her, under her jaw. Um, so it's sometimes it's difficult, especially since she's just learning to drive, uh, to get that through to her, but. I'm able to, most of the time, able to push her head away and get her on the rail because she knows to yield um, to me if I step toward her. And if I hadn't done that, she would just be spinning around in circles. So I'm encouraging her with my voice, good girl, that's right, um, when she's on the right track. When, so here she got a, sp a spin on me anyway, and so I just stop and get her straightened out again. Because sometimes you can't control the which way they spin right or left, and that's why if you stay out of the rings, you won't lose your horse. Um, where if you're in the rings and the horse spins and takes off, she's not prone to taking off. But on horses that were so fearful that they wanted to take off, you would lose them. So I'm just going to get her back on track. Uh, you know, every time she'll understand more and more what I want. And when I pull the right rein to tip her head right, um, and this is her better way going to the left, as is most horses' better way. Um, and then when you turn them to the right, all of a sudden oh, I don't want to go that way, or they won't keep their head straight. But, like I said, with every short session on driving, uh, 
you'll see improvement and I am doing this um, and she tried to turn and I was able to stop her there uh, I'm doing this to put steering on her before I ride her um, wouldn't it be nice to know that your horse actually understands what you're asking before you get on their back that they can give left and right um, and from way behind if they could do it from way behind then how easy will it be when you're actually on their back and you have more aids your seat and um, being right there with them where they can feel you Finishing up a little more ground driving. I, a lot of times I have the video um, just cut and retape again to make sure I can load these. Um, she looks to be doing a lot nicer here. When I ask her to halt, I take a very light feel on my reins she, and uh, here she spins again I disengage her hindquarters just to get her back focused on me um, I take a very light feel on the reins uh, squeeze and release uh, as I say her name Becca and whoa and then I pull squeeze and release my reins um, you see here I'm not using a whip and I will as I go forward, but um, with a horse that's trying to turn and spin and look at you and doesn't understand everything, it's really hard to uh, manage my lines, carry the whip, and do everything. Uh, you know, as we go forward, then I keep the bite wrapped up in my left hand and carry a whip. But as I said, she probably had two other times of driving and I used the rope halter and this is new um, and um, you can imagine um, if you were using a bit and how much pulling on her mouth would be going on for her lack of understanding and rooting and you know who would want to do that so I much prefer to start the horse in a rope halter or a bitless bridle and um, I, I do keep all of my horses bitless and I do start all of my clients horses bitless and um, I find it a lot uh, more effective. I'm going to stop here with the ground driving. A lot of this is boring for me to watch. Um, hope it's not boring for you to watch um, to show what really happens um, before it looks so pretty. Thank you for watching. <laughs>